Harris. I am with the Pennsylvania Petroleum Association. I would like to welcome you to our webinar series. Uh, we normally do this this webinar or our webinar series on the first Tuesday of each month at 9 a.m. Uh, this month we're making, uh, this is going to be our second webinar of the month, and due to just the timing of this specific topic, we uh, we felt it was necessary to, to add it. So uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Before we get started, I would like to just go over a couple things on my end. Um, you're going to be muted, as in everyone that's attending this webinar. You're not going to be able to talk. Uh, there is a there is a question feature through GoToWebinar, and we encourage you to ask questions that way. Uh, we we hope this is going to be a constructive and interactive uh, session with with Pennsylvania Petroleum Pennsylvania Petroleum Association members and the Department of Ag in regards to the upcoming uh, spotted lanternfly permit. So please uh, please use that feature. Uh, Amy's going to go through her presentation, and then we will we will answer questions at the end. Uh, if you if again if you type in the question through the question feature and go to webinar, I will then read the question to Amy. If for some reason the question is not relevant for the entire group, or or I need to connect you after the fact, I will certainly do that. But again, please use that feature. Um, whether you know it's during Amy's presentation or afterwards, and we will uh, do our best to get to that question. <clears throat> At this point, I would like to introduce our presenter, Amy Higley, with the Department of Agriculture. Amy is currently serving as the Spotted Lanternfly Permit Coordinator, um, and she's going to be covering the Spotted Lanternfly Permit Review process. At this point, Amy, I'd like to pass it off to you. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us this morning to learn about the Spotted Lanternfly Program. Um, as Ted said, I am the Pennsylvania Permit Coordinator. Uh, I'm also helping New Jersey and Delaware with their permit systems for the Spotted Lanternfly. Um, and as you see on the screen, we have many uh, agencies and organizations that are active in this program to fight the pest. Um, USDA, Penn State and PDA are the main partners in Pennsylvania uh, who are working in operations. That would be our survey and treatment teams. Uh, research um, is very large in Penn State. Uh, Cornell, Rutgers, Temple, um, they are able to conduct research and uh, share that data with each other towards the goal of, of treatment ideas, uh, management techniques. Uh, the regulatory side of things, which I am in, uh, we have each state has a regulatory official um, and compliance teams. And the last piece is our communication. Uh, and again, the three big partners in PA each have a com communications team uh, who are trying to spread uh, education and outreach through the state and through the region. So Penn State, PDA, and USDA, again, are working towards the communication. So I'll just cover a brief introduction of the pest in Pennsylvania. Um, what's at risk for our state and in the Mid-Atlantic region? Uh, the quarantine, the regulations, and compliance. I'll provide some important links at the end where you can find additional information. And then we should have time for the questions, as Ted mentioned earlier. So the spotted lanternfly is a native to Southeast Asia, found in China, Bangladesh, and Vietnam. It's invasive in Japan, South Korea, and now Pennsylvania. Uh, in South Korea, it's considered an invasive pest and had a huge impact on their grape and peach uh, growing. South Korea had three introductions and did not stand up a quarantine, uh, did not take actions against the pest, and their whole country was overrun in three years. Uh, South Korea is just slightly smaller than Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, and you'll see later how the quarantine has been able to control it in Pennsylvania thus far. In Pennsylvania, spotted lanternfly is a pest in major agricultural commodities. 
um, our grapes are at risk, hops, fruit trees, like apples and peaches, our hardwoods, and we've had reports of them over the last several years um, being in like garden plants, nursery stock, um, blueberries, cucumbers, and really up to 70 different plant species that uh, this pest will attack. So what's at risk for our Pennsylvania economy? Uh, forest products, $19 billion. Uh, we are the number one exporter of hardwoods in the US. Uh, grapes, uh, another almost $5 billion each year, and that's between the juice and the wine grape industries. And then apple and peaches. And lastly, the nursery and landscape products. Um, and that would be, again, uh, anywhere from the, the smaller cane fruits, blueberries, uh, on up to uh, your horticulturally important trees and fruit trees. So things we can't put a value on that are also at risk include property values. Um, no one wants to buy a home that's infested with spotted lanternfly or a property infested with spotted lanternfly um, where their children can't go out and play uh, because there's insects all over. Um, they do excrete honeydew, which gets all over um, outdoor furniture and decks. Uh, and it's, it's quite nasty. Uh, our tourism, uh, is at risk. So we're the third largest state park system in the US. Uh, game lands are also um, potentially impacted. Uh, our ecosystems, so as this pest infests the forest um, and excretes their honeydew, a sooty mold comes in and grows on that honeydew and impacts the regrowth uh, of the understory and then potentially we'll, you know, that's our next years and, and decades from now, uh, hardwoods. So again, remember that $19 billion, uh, if we don't have that regrowth, uh, that's a huge impact. So again, um, the residential issue, um, this is a black cherry tree. Um, on a private property. You see their children's play things are in the background. Um, you, you don't want your children out there uh, playing in this. So it has a huge impact to quality of life. And as the population of spotted lantern fly has grown in Pennsylvania, they've been able to adapt. Um, the lead researcher at Penn State um, actually had been in China and, and observed this particular pest uh, in its native range and then observed it here in Pennsylvania and sees that it has adapt adapted. Um, so that's very concerning and uh, they are directing their research again towards um, what this pest needs to feed on uh, what it will feed on, uh, life cycle, so they can come up with effective treatment methods. So Pennsylvania uh, established the quarantine to protect the state. Um, this, we need to protect our, our economy. Uh, $25 billion a year in the agricultural products I mentioned before between the grapes, the hardwoods, uh, fruit trees. We want to slow the spread and keep the pest contained as our survey crews are working to treat infested properties. Uh, we also need to assure our trading partners that we are taking steps to protect not only our economy, but theirs as well. Um, other states do not want this pest in, in their areas. They don't want us to ship it to them. So we need to, to prove that we're, we're protecting uh, the products as they're shipped. And last, again, 
we need to let science and technology advance. We need to let those researchers have time to find effective treatment methods. Here's the latest quarantine map. You see um, our quarantine is just in the southeastern 14 counties. Dauphin was the last to come on to the quarantine uh, just last month. So again, we're just slightly smaller than South Korea, uh, who was completely infested in three years. And here, since it was detected in PA about four and a half years ago, um, it has been contained to those southeastern counties. So what does the quarantine actually say? Um, the quarantine covers all living life stages. Uh, this is a pest uh, and we want to protect again uh, our economy and others. So we are requiring inspections and safeguarding of products and regulated articles within the quarantine and out of. And the quarantine also defines what a regulated article is. And that's anything that may harbor spotted lanternfly life stages. The spotted lanternfly is an active hitchhiker that makes use of many modes of transportation. Um, any type of automobile or conveyance, um, construction equipment, anything that sits outside. Um, again, these insects will uh, gather on, um, lay their eggs on. Um, so we need to make sure that they are inspected before they're moved. This picture was sent to us last summer. Um, you see from a, some type of construction organization. Um, this is a fourth stage nymph. Uh, you see it's gained that coloration as it's molted up through the life stages. Um, this is just before they molt to the adult stage. So probably midsummer last year. Um, and you see that they've crawled up on this tire, probably looking for some heat. Um, and they are a warm weather insect. So this is the concern that um, these insects will crawl up on a vehicle, they will crawl up a tree or some building nearby and then get on a vehicle, they'll get into cargo. So we want to prevent that spread. So the permit system is defined under the quarantine order. A uh, permit is required for businesses, agencies, and organizations located or working within the quarantine, which move products, vehicles, or other conveyances within or out of the quarantine. Um, Penn State is hosting the training and exam for Pennsylvania. And there is no cost to, a, to the business to get uh, either the training or a permit. So in the permit system, we ask that a designated employee complete the course. Um, one business may have several employees that complete the course, uh, whatever it takes to train uh, and manage the system for your business. The course may be completed in one sitting or in increments as your schedule allows. So you can log in and out as needed to finish. After you've completed the permit course, that employee is considered a trainer and will be responsible to train other employees. And the course actually has employee training materials and other resources built into it. So you don't have to you know, reinvent the wheel or come up with some kind of training um, for your employees. The Eastern Plant Board uh, state regulatory officials have agreed to accept each other's permits. So there's no need to take multiple permit courses. Uh, just take one if you're in Pennsylvania, take our course. Uh, Delaware and New Jersey are also um, asking their, or 
regulating their businesses to take uh, a permit course as well. So uh, if you're working in multiple states, uh, you just need to, to complete one course. So what are some examples of businesses that may or may not need a permit? Um, if your business does not stop or work within the quarantine, let's say you just drive through uh, an edge of the quarantine without stopping or working, you do not need a permit. If you work within one quarantine county and don't leave the county, you still need to get a permit. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, um, why you need to do that. Um, I, and the last, my business travels into other states with quarantine zones. Do I need a permit for each? So again, no, you, you just need that one permit. Um, the regulatory officials, uh, the compliance teams in the other states know what each other's permits look like uh, and they know what um, to expect. Okay, so you've completed the course, received your permit, and then what do you do? Uh, train your employees. And again, those PowerPoints for training employees are included in the Penn State course. Um, if you would like to create your own training, uh, include the life cycle. We want people to know what to look for at different times of the year. So um, there's several stages to the life cycle. Um, we want people to know what to look for in April or May versus what to look for in July and August. Uh, let them know what the risk of the SLF movement, uh, especially the adults and the egg masses, and what needs to be inspected. So going back to those regulated articles, um, you know, are you inspecting your vehicles? Do you have cargo you're taking um, that would need to be inspected? Ensure your vendors are also permitted. So if you have uh, someone coming onto your property um, within the quarantine or they originate within the, the quarantine, um, have they done their due diligence uh, and safeguarded their vehicles and products as they're coming onto your property? And document, document your efforts. Um, we want you to keep record records of your employee training and inspections of vehicles and control me measures um, for, for two years. The inspection logs can be um, any form that you would like, um, as long as you can prove you did your best to prevent the spread of this pest. Um, so if there's something you use already, you have a safety check or a pre or post uh, vehicle check, if you can incorporate, you know, another box um, to say, yes, we've completed the spotted lantern fly inspection, uh, no, we didn't find any, or yes, we did find spotted lantern fly, um, and then just include, you know, they were washed off, uh, they were you know, crushed, stepped on, killed, whatever. Um, so we would require you to do a pre and post trip inspection um, as you're leaving the quarantine, maybe going to uh, your customer's uh, properties. You wanna make sure you don't have anything on your vehicle as you're heading out. And then as you come back, uh, just take another look, make sure you're not, um, again, carrying that that pest. During the summer swarming, um, when the adult in infestations are quite high, um, the drivers might need to do an additional inspection. Um, you know, just ask them to have an awareness of this pest and to conduct additional inspections as needed. In the winter, um, the, the adults die off. Um, so a hard freeze or two will kill them. So typically our hard freezes come late November, mid-December timeframe. Um, so at this time, after the adults are dead, 
um, you want to clean your equipment and conduct an egg mass inspection. So you remove all the dead adults and remove and destroy any egg masses you find, document those actions, and then no further inspections are required in the winter. Um, then you just wanna resume inspections in April or early May when that spring hatch occurs. So roadside compliance inspections uh, will begin in Pennsylvania May 1st. Uh, this will be PDA, Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture, working in conjunction with the PSP. Uh, we are requiring permits and we need to know that the drivers are knowledgeable. So it's not enough that you just hand a, your employee, your driver a permit and send them off. Um, the uh, compliance teams that are out there are going to ask that employee about Spotted Lanternfly and gauge their knowledge. Uh, someone without a permit um, will be allowed to continue, but will be issued a notice of rejection. Um, and then that company will be logged uh, in our system as receiving one, uh, not having a permit. And then we'll keep an eye out for um, a re repeat offender. So if, if you continue to not have permits and not be in, in compliance, um, there may be uh, civil or criminal penalties. Um, and anyone or any vehicle that is carrying a living life stage uh, SLF uh, may be refused entry. Okay, so some important links uh, and an email. Uh, if you have questions regarding the permit system, uh, quarantine information, com compliance, um, you can email the SLF permit at pa.gov. PDA has an SLF uh, quarantine page. Uh, there's FAQs. There's a guidance document for obtaining the permit. The SLF quarantine order is posted if you would like to read that document. Uh, we also host a participant list. So as businesses complete the course, um, they are in compliance. We add them to the list and uh, that is open for public view. Um, so someone who is uh, actively engaged in the system, uh, maybe a, a homeowner wants to make sure that their business, the businesses that they use are permitted, they can go online and check. Reporting SLF sightings and for management information, uh, you can go to extension uh, psu.edu, Spotted Lanternfly. They have an enormous amount of information um, for the management, um, hope for homeowners, uh, some uh, reporting tools. Uh, if you are not sure what you're seeing, you can go online and, and um, go through the steps and the tool to, to figure out if it is in fact spotted lanternfly. And then again, um, the SLF permit online course is hosted by Penn State Extension uh, and you see the link at the bottom. Okay, so do we have any questions? I'm not seeing any at the moment. Actually, hold on. Sorry, excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Where can we get glue bands for the trees or do you not recommend this? The sticky bands. Um, sticky bands are available. Um, you, know, you can buy them at a hardware store. You can buy them online. Um, we had offered what stock we had here at PDA to the conservation districts, the county conservation districts. Um, if someone wants to, you know, ask their local um, district if they got a supply, maybe you know, the possible you could get them for free through them. 
Okay. Um, all right, hold on one second here. <clears throat> Are you expecting drivers to check and log trucks after every stop? For example, local heating oil delivery, question mark. Right, so um, again, we just want them to do the pre and post trip inspections and then keep an eye out through the day. Um, if they're seeing, maybe they're, they're going onto a property and it has a high infestation, um, you know, as they're leaving, if they could do their best to, you know, knock them off or mitigate anything that had gotten on their vehicle, um, but they don't need to log that. Just please be vigilant um, before they then go, go on to another customer's home. Okay, we had a similar question, which was pretty much the same question, just asked in a different way. So I'm not gonna ask that one again. We did have another one in regards to the stickers. <clears throat> how do we how do we get stickers? We only have mirror hangers. Okay, so we have actually transitioned to a paper permit um, and away from the hang tag and decals. Um, the hang tag and decals are still valid. Um, but anyone going through the course now would get a paper permit and then they would be able to copy and distribute as they needed through their fleet of business vehicles. And that can be kept uh, with the registration uh, or in a permit book, uh, whatever suits you. Okay, uh, next question I have, how long is the program <clears throat> I'm guessing this way. How long is the program going to run for? Question mark. Mm -hmm. um, our best guess right now, um, it could be 10 years. Uh, this is a long-term effort to find effective treatment methods um, to contain the pest. Um, we are working in those high-risk areas right now. Uh, USDA again, um, also has survey and treatment crews out. Um, what we wanna do is uh, contain it in the quarantine and push in towards the core. Um, but we need that the time to give to the researchers to come up with those effective methods of treatment. Okay, one question I have on my end, what, what's the chances of the quarantine zone expanding? Well, uh, for me, uh, I think that would be impossible to predict um, right now. Uh, Dauphin County was just brought under the quarantine uh, last month. Um, and that's mainly because of an infestation in Harrisburg. Um, you know, our counties aren't evenly populated with this pest, um, which is another reason why we want people to inspect as they're traveling within the quarantine. Uh, we don't want uh, someone traveling from a high population area to a, an area in, a, in the quarantine that has a low population or no population or uh, reinfest, reinfesting already treated areas. So um, yeah, there's no way to tell right now um, how it's going to, to increase or not increase over the years. Okay. Uh, getting back into the questions, will there be an extension given for the May 1 compliance date? Uh, PDA uh, will recognize uh, sort of a grace period for those just coming on, like Dolphin County businesses. Um, but I recommend just taking those initial steps and having a plan uh, as far as completing employee training. So um, as soon as you can go in, um, register and, and take the online permit course um, and, and get, a, get a start on, into the compliance piece and be able to show that okay. you've done that. Mm -hmm. um. Next question, what is being done to prevent residents from spreading the spider lantern fly? Part of the quarantine order is also directed at residents. Um, they need to have a compliance check sheet 
um, before they move uh, personal items or like uh, lawn furniture or grill, you know, if they're, they're moving or selling it to, on to someone, uh, they should have that compliance check checklist, um, which describes the life cycle. It offers some um, tips on what items need to be checked. And then on the back, um, you know, it would have them just sign it and they can sign it once and just keep it. Um, but that certifies that they are aware um, they did the inspection before they moved their, their property. Um, the other piece of that is again, um, back to our communications teams. Um, they do have communication campaigns going on in, in various media, um, trying to educate the public. Uh, Penn State has been a huge partner uh, for the outreach and, and education. Okay, uh, next question, winter inspections. Do, do we document once a month, daily, and what months do you consider winter? In winter, um, so you have to, again, it's, it's based on, on the, the weather. Um, you have to wait till those hard freezes come and you see the adults have died off. Um, so, you know, as early as late November through, uh, you know, mid-December, when the hard freezes occur, um, do that good inspection of your vehicles, uh, trailers, whatever you have, um, document that, and then no inspections um, are required, you know, January, February, March, most of April. Um, spring hatch typically occurs the, about the first week of May. Um, so again, just uh, be, try to be aware, you know, um, of that, that spring date where a hatch is likely to occur and, and start your inspections again. Okay, so just, but just to confirm, there's no hard date. It's it seems more of a kind of a moving date on a on an annual basis. Right, right. These these insects are very uh, like any insect uh, are driven by the weather. Um, they are not cold tolerant, um, and they they will wait again uh, until the spring warmer weather before they hatch out of their egg cases. So. And that, okay. that varies uh, year to year. All right. Um, and just to confirm, there's the, the the permit requirement is on all all business owned vehicles. Uh, so in other words, you know, it's not anything weight related in regards to the vehicle or anything else. It's all whether it's a a, a car, a, you know, an HVAC van, a, a twenty, you know, a, a CDL truck, it, does, it doesn't matter. Is that is that correct? It doesn't. It, it doesn't. It cover the quarantine covers all all regulated articles. So all all vehicles or conveyances. Um, if you have salesmen or executives driving, uh, you know, a regular passenger car, or you have the box trucks, you have the the larger like a tanker truck or or tractor trailer. Um, they all fall under the quarantine and should be inspected. Okay, uh, I have a situational question here. If a driver does his vehicle search after picking up a load and sees no spotted lanternflies, and then en route to his delivery location is stopped for a check and a spotted lanternfly is found, what is the likely outcome from a law enforcement perspective towards the, drive, the driver slash company? Not very likely. Uh, we understand that as you're traveling, you might run into uh, an insect or a swarm, certainly in the summer, um, that that may happen. So as that driver uh, interacts with the PDA team, um, ask you know, ask him to make sure he has his inspection log um, and the permit with him to show. Yes, I I did my inspection this morning. Um, the vehicle was clean. 
Um, and, you know, it is reasonable to think that that he picked up that that insect somewhere along the way. Yeah. Okay, I think you already answered the one portion of this question, but I'm just going to read the entire thing. What size vehicles are to be inspected? Vans, pickups, or just larger commercial vehicles? Are all employees to be trained or just those who well, I, I think what they're asking here is, is it just those who physically drive the vehicle? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, drivers certainly uh, should be trained. Uh, anyone that would have uh, direct impact. Um, so this might be outside the realm of, of this organization, but um, if you think about dock workers who are loading trucks, uh, they should be trained, um, you know, if you have a uh, salesman going out, uh, you know, working within the quarantine, they should be trained. Uh, I would think, you know, your administrative staff probably would not, um, you know, as they just come into a central location to work and they are not traveling, um, they they would not need the training. but anyone out in the field anyone driving your company vehicles around the the quarantine should be should be knowledgeable about the pest okay uh next question is more of a general question what what is the department of ag doing to, uh to prevent new pests or additional pests similar to the spotted lanternfly coming into our state and country okay um so each state uh, each country has a different set of uh, regulations against foreign pests. Um, we actively have teams out during the year looking for uh, potential invasive pests through our cooperative agriculture survey program. Um, so we get a list from the USDA um, of potential uh, agricultural or invasive uh, pests, uh, and that includes diseases and uh, insects, mollusks, um, and we have teams that go out uh, to survey Pennsylvania properties uh, for those insects or diseases, uh, whatnot. Okay, uh, next question is, can I get a copy of this presentation? And the person that asked this question, um, I'm assuming, Amy, you don't mind sharing this? No, I can share that. Okay, so if you can email that to me, I'll email it to this person. Mm -hmm. uh, if anyone else does want a copy of it, please email me and I will I will get it to you. Um, and again, this, just asking the question again, to be clear, we have, we have to have permits for all vehicles with no weight limit. Correct with no weight minimum. That's correct. Yeah, if it's a okay. business vehicle, it would need a permit. Okay, um, that's all I'm seeing here. I just got one more. Any difference if vehicles are owned by a leasing company and not the business, question mark. So the business is leasing or renting vehicles for their business yes, purpose? Yes, that's my interpretation of the question. It's not actually owned by the company. Okay. So even if you are leasing a vehicle, um, if you're using it for your business purpose, you should have a permit in that vehicle. So again, with a new uh, paper permit, system um, you're able to complete the course you'll receive your permit and that permit may be copied and provided to the driver or put into the vehicles um, you're operating to show that you've done your due diligence um, completed the course and trained your employees okay so in other words the responsibility falls on the actual company that is driving the vehicle, not whoever owns the vehicle. Correct, correct, yes. Um, okay, getting some additional um, 
requests for the copies which of this presentation, which I'll definitely do. Anyone that's on this webinar is also going to get a a replay link of the webinar so they can share it with someone else at their company or watch it again. Uh, that is available as well. Give it a couple more seconds here for any other questions. Okay, all right. Um, I'm not seeing anything on my end. Amy, thank you very much uh, for you and the department uh, being willing to do this. And um, we, we, you know, we appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having us and sharing the information. Okay, all right. Have a great day, everyone.